Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year for most of us. For others, it's a time where we're forced to put up with more of our family's crap than usual, and that friction can do serious damage to our Christmas spirit. That's what happens to Max after his cousins embarrass him, causing Max to tear up his letter to Santa and denounce Christmas. But someone else has heard his plea, the dark counterpart to Santa Claus, who descends on Max's neighborhood and wreaks Christmas-themed havoc on his family, forcing them to band together to fight for survival. But nobody ever escapes the wrath of the Christmas demon, Krampus. I'm Connor Izagari. I'm Carol Luger. I'm Colton Jenkins. And this is Filmgasm. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to a very special Christmas Filmgasm. I'm joined today by my esteemed colleagues who have generously agreed to help me once again unravel the legend of Krampus. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. (laughs) Yes, I am here. Yeah, we intended this to be a big old, like most of the team episode. Regrettably, Josh had a scheduling conflict, but you know what? We have plenty more opportunities to do that. Yeah, Josh isn't even home right now. Yeah. Kind of scheduling conflict. He is off on a trip. So, yes. Yeah, I had, yeah, I had to flip a coin, basically. <laughs> um, So, let's get this out of the way. I have covered this film before. Two years ago on episode 114 with a former co-host who shall remain nameless. Frankly, it could have been better. A little effort goes a long way. So, when I found out about Michael Doherty's director's cut of Krampus... It felt like a good excuse to redo one of our weaker episodes. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff has been put back in the book. We'll end end it there. The amount of shots fired (laughs) in like a minute. It's it's time to start being real. It's like like a roast is happening right now. Sometimes things just don't work out. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta realize that. You gotta gotta move on. Exactly. Like I've seen in Goodfellas, we were leading this unnamed person to the room. <laughs> Start to click on what's happening. It's too oh. late. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I've got, a, I've got a stronger team now. I've got options, and I've got people who want to be here. So congratulations. <laughs> I feel like at least one of those three items are true. You guess which one? <laughs> Yeah, some episodes we're going to do again because they can be better, and I know they can. They uh, they told me, they're like, oh, I want to be on a movie podcast. And I was like, you? I know, but you know what? If <laughs> that hadn't happened, you wouldn't be here. So you know, Yeah, that's fair. Everything happens for a reason, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before we get into Krampus, uh, I've got two updates on the Rewind. Pretty cool updates. First, this one updates our bonus episode on Escape from New York. The writing directing team known as Radio Silence uh, has announced that their upcoming Snake Plissken adventure will not be a remake of the 1981 classic, but a continuation off of Escape from L.A. It'll be similar to what they did with Scream. So we're not getting a remake of Escape from New York. If this does happen, it's going to be Escape 3, which is very cool, and I really hope Someone's talking to Kurt Russell. Yeah, I think I, I, for me, it's the best possible option to do because yes. you, I, I wouldn't want this remade because of one. Obviously, Riot Russell has made it very well known he's not taking on this role, and I don't blame it, him or any uh, person in Hollywood working who has a very you know like Scott Eastwood with Clint Eastwood is an example I bring up. I understand not those those guys not want to take up their um their parents' most iconic roles. Because that's just repeating what their their dad or their mom did. It's not they want to forge his own path, and that makes complete sense. I get it. Um, so I wouldn't want that. I don't think anyone then outside of him, anyone else could step into those shoes. Because so um, I was talking to Josh about it. I was like, a lot of people forget, you know, when Escape from New York came out, no one expected that out of Kurt Russell. Absolutely fucking no one. This was a guy that was trying to break out of Disney for years. He did do the thing first with um John Carpenter. Uh, I believe. I think that was her first collab. No, New York was. That was 81. The thing was 82. Were, okay. This was like their first thing to get our collab. Ah, collab together. Tongue tied. Uh, <laughs> first collab together. 
no one knew who, you know, he was just a Disney guy. And all of a sudden he gives us like one of the most immortal, like fucking badasses of cinema we've ever gotten. And that was such like that was the that was like a wow fight, like holy shit. Um, so to me, I think the best I, I agree with this option. Like, do go ahead, lean into the requel, the legacy sequel that's been the rage, lean into it, talk to Kurt Russell if you can talk to John Carpenter, see if he'll be on board with it. Um, and do a, a final hoorah for uh his take an old man snake, and then yeah, whoever you want to pass the baton to, you know. If that is an ideal they have in mind, get an, a new blood into it by all means, but give Kurt Russell one last, you know, uh, rodeo, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Colton, thoughts? Um, my thoughts are um, Escape 3 already exists. It's one of the best movies ever made. It's called Ghosts of Mars. <laughs> so that's how I feel yeah. about this. <clears throat> no, you know, oh. I, I said, uh, I think last time, um, you, you brought this up. I, I'm always down for new movies, um, but it's cool that it's going to be a, a legacy sequel. It'd be cool to see older Snake, I think, you know, kicking some ass, like what they're doing with Indiana Jones. It'd be cool if they did like a God of War type thing, you know, he's like bringing his son in, but he's like, you know, in a situation, he's like training him to. Oh, I'm sure they'll, they'll do something like that. Yeah, I, I, that, that's what I think would be really cool, but. I'm not like I'm not as big of a fan of those movies as you guys are, but that's because I watched them late. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm down for it. I'm always well, down I like for it. I like that these guys have already proven their ability to take on an existing property and add to its, you know, its intensity with Scream. So if they're going to bring that kind of you know flavor and uh, effort into Escape from New York, I'm I'm down to see what they got. Yeah, these these guys have been consistently really awesome to me. Um, obviously, everyone now really knows them thanks to Scream. That was the big one. They're working on Scream Six as we speak. Um, which, God, the, the numbering of these movies still now bugs me to this day. Um, that's yeah. a whole different thing. Uh, but before that, you know, when you look at like Ready or Not, which was a one of the most original, outrageous, like awesome horror films to have come along in a long time for me. And then even before that, when they were, the work they do with VHS and um, Southbound, they were cutting their teeth on a lot of anthology movies. Like these guys have consistently proven to me that they know what they're doing. So I'm more than down for them to to tackle this one and see what they do. Yeah, so am I. And that actually segues great into our, my next update, which updates our past episodes on Scream, Scream 2, and Scream 3. We got our first teaser trailer for Scream 6 which is set for a March 2023 release. The film's going to take place in New York City with a new ghost face hunting the survivors of the previous film. And if I remember correctly, well, this isn't our first time out of Woodsboro because I think three was in Hollywood. Yeah. So, but it is cool to leave Woodsboro, go to New York City, and revisit Ghostface and also get back to the proper numbering. So Scream 6, you guys see the trailer? Oh, yeah, I did. I did not. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Right. I, I did not, but um, I like Scream. I like Ghostface. It'll be really great to see Ghostface waiting through the R train. That's the trailer. It's him just on the. Are subway, you serious? On the subway, and then like, you know, they go through the tunnel, and it gets darker, and then Ghostface is closer to them. Then it gets darker again. And then he's right in front of them, and it's like, oh shit! And it's on Halloween, so there's like six Ghost Faces. Oh, that's cool as shit. Yeah, it's it's it looks neat. It's the same guys, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Dang. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this one. Um it was a cool teaser, and then there's some interesting stuff they brought up that kind of happened after the, the teaser got released. One being that Kevin Williamson has confirmed for everyone that Stu uh Mocker is dead. So oh. stop stop hoping for Matthew Lillard, guys. He is dead, but he is cast in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, so we're getting him in a horror film. What at some point? <laughs> um what? the what? Five Nights at Freddy's movies being produced by Blumhouse. No. Um, Stop. <laughs> it's happening. No. He's been cast. Okay, so, you know... <clears throat> okay, sure. I, I I will go see it. I'll see it for him alone. <laughs> I, I will uh-huh. go see it. But, uh, <laughs> fair enough. Um, So that, that guy from also... A very cool point was made out. The mask is all cracked up and stuff. And this, this, and tra- the tra- and screenshot they released is very 
moldy, old, cracked up looking mask. And they said that's not arbitrary that you will find out that will make sense when you see the film. It's the mask from the first movie, isn't it? It's not, it sounds like Spencer being laid as to where this is heading. Obviously, they're going to be, you know, not saying anything. There's a loomis under that mask. <laughs> he dropped it <laughs> on the subway floor. That's what happened. Yeah. Oh, I, uh... <laughs> That'd be fucking great if he just tripped and he's like, shit. He gets up and his mask is cracked. <laughs> oh, god damn it. Um, no, I like I like how in the in the in the fifth one that's just called fucking scream. So now we got two screams. Um I like how you know they did the smart thing about playing it safe, you know, keeping it relatively safe and contained. And it sounds like based off what they've been saying with this new one and the teaser, it's like okay, we played it safe with that one. We got fans into a familiar spot to get them back into this board. Now let's experiment, let's go a little bit more crazy, let's put even more of our spin on this, which I'm all down for. Like you know, it was going to happen, you know, whether one day this franchise was going to continue beyond Wes Craven, whether we wanted to or not. And I'm just glad that, like, these guys are handling it so well with, again, the fifth one being definitely a homage in every way, shape, or form to Wes Craven. And this one being very much like, okay, now this is our screen movie more than even five was. Perfect. Yeah, this is this is good. I like this. I like something new. And this franchise just keeps on giving. You know, we've had pretty much consistently good movies this whole time. So, you know, I mean, to an extent, you know, a lot of people don't like three. Some people don't like four, but everyone's pretty uniform on the rest of them. Yeah. And even then, like three, like I'm I'm, I'm on the mindset that four is actually really good. Um, Even with the Instagram filter effect that seems mm-hmm. to run throughout it. Um, And three is my least favorite. But even then, like compared to least favorites and other franchises I love and are holding near and dear to my heart, I'll still watch Scream 3. Yeah. Easy. I mean, like, it's no Leprechaun back to the hood. But it is a good sequel. <laughs> what? I'm learning so much right now. I'm just kidding. I just love that title. <laughs> that movie exists. Uh, we're not kidding you. It, it exists. There's we're Leprechaun not- in the hood, and then there's Leprechaun back to the hood. Duh. The hood. Yeah. Great. Duh. Duh. <laughs> love it. My Duh. favorite Scream movie is Scream 1, because that is the only one I've seen. Oh. The sequels actually are really good. I think you'd enjoy those. I have yeah. I have questions. Well, Colton, okay. you have until March 10th. Okay, I will, I will watch them all. You know, <laughs> this might piss you off, but I have actually watched the first movie, and then I watched the TV show. Ooh. What? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Can we edit that part out later and post? That's right. I didn't like it. I watched it because I was in the mood for now, torture. You know? Now, now you sound like the rock. I didn't like it, all right? It, <laughs> I may have watched it. <laughs> All three seasons. I did not like it. No, I I just watched the first season. <laughs> well, um, Scream Two is good. Scream Three is okay. Scream Four is okay. Five Cream was great, and Six Cream looks good too. Why? Um, I just have a question about the the lore. Okay. Um, why are there multiple ghost face masks? Did the killer not make that mask? Because I don't think no, he. Bu- in the first movie, it was like just a a ghost mask you buy at the store, no. and then events of the first movie become infamous so it becomes like a halloween costume so people are dressing up as the woodsboro killer and that allows ghostface to you know use that to his advantage because it's a new killer every movie who's got his own reasons for wearing the costume and take and killing people but, yeah. but they, kill, they, they kill the same people go after the same people yep every time <laughs> but like why because because it the first three especially well first four are like all connected to like sydney's past yeah um, so that's why they keep going after like that core trio plus any new supporting characters they put in each sequel. Um, and then like, yeah, they, yeah, like, he, like Connor was saying, they get away with it because there's it, in the universe of Scream, the, the events of the first film are turned into what they call Stab. That's the name of the, the movie series within Scream. So it called Stab, and that's how they can get away with having them keep getting the mask and the outfits because they're merchandising for the Stab series, which on like by the time you get to Scream 4, they're on like Stab 7 or 8. Oh, imagine you go to Spirit Halloween next year. What's on the shelf? Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. Dude, like, this year? Possibly. <laughs> honestly, I know. Look, like Scream first hit just to be like another layer of meta to go with it. But now, based off, I mean, Grant, I'm saying this is someone who did watch the entirety of the, the Dahmer show. Um, so good. How people are, hmm? So good, by the way. It was oh actually my- really good. I will say that. I. Judge me all you want, people online, but 
I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I would not be surprised how people act that, yeah, you go in Spirit of Halloween, there's like a Dahmer, a Dahmer fucking costume. Would yeah. not fucking shock me at all. Mm. So it, are, are, are the movies goofy because th- that's the vibe i've always gotten from them that they're like they they maintain the tone of like the first one's tone is maintained throughout the entire series yeah. so they're all pretty they, uh, they deal with like you know the rules of a horror movie but it is a serious horror movie yeah. there's just moments of like meta joking throughout yeah and each one each one deals with a different type so like screen two obviously deals with secret rules screen three deals with trilogy rules um screen four kind of they kind of dove into like reboot stuff even though it's a continuation but reboot new millennia the new the new age of horror at the time with the torture porn era going on and then screen five dealt with legacy requel that's actually where i got the term requel i didn't even know that was a fucking thing until scream said it um <laughs> and it deals with that so each one does deal with like certain aspects of the horror especially with franchising okay i'll i'll watch them because i like again um I like the aesthetic of the killer. I like campy shit, so I'll I'll check it out. Yeah, they're sweet. Yeah, we we got a, a big thing planned for Scream Six on Film Guys, and when that comes out, we're going to do Scream Four. So that'll be an opportunity for us to kind of revisit the Scream franchise and all that. So that yeah, sweet. Yeah, cool. Um, so before we get into the movie, let's discuss the origins of Krampus. Uh. What so? What do you guys before you saw this movie? What did you know about Krampus, the Christmas demon? Um, I was a fucking idiot, and I always assumed that Krampus, like if you were a bad kid, I thought Krampus was the one that visited your house and gave you coal. And then I watched, um, do you know the show Grimm? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I watched that, and Kr- there's an episode with Krampus where he like kidnaps children and then like ties them to a tree and then like fucking eats them. So I thought that's what Krampus was, which I'm I don't think is far off. <laughs> um, but I, I always liked the the idea of a demonic Santa Claus, but I never understood like, is it Santa Claus his like evil form? Is it his brother, or is it like d- does he live on the South fucking Pole? I don't know. Like, but uh, <laughs> but this movie I did I think does a really good job of giving him a backstory without like spelling out his backstory, which I, I like a lot. So, yeah. 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 How about you, Caleb? Uh, you're going to be surprised. I didn't check shit about Krampus before this movie. Um, most I like, again, I know I mentioned before growing up in a very religious household. I knew about Santa Claus. I knew everything about fucking Santa Claus and Jesus and everything related to the Christmas holiday with that. They didn't know shit about Krampus, so this film was coming out, and kind of right before it, other Krampus-related stuff was starting to really take, get popular and come out more often, and I was like, what is Krampus? And I looked at I was like, this sounds awesome. <laughs> Why don't we do this? <laughs> yeah, only the Germans could come up with evil Santa Claus who will torture you, like, kill your parents and torture you to death if you misbehave on Christmas. Is yeah. your kid being bad? Beat the shit out of them for the demonic Santa Claus. Yeah, what's crazy is that it's accepted that they have a Krampus Day. Like they, oh. the whole country celebrates. Oh, we're gonna talk about oh, that. Yeah, it's Krampus oh, is a new thing in Europe. Like hang their children upside down on like upside down crosses outside in the front yard. What the oh, fuck? What, what is you Krampus? See, do you see the beauty of when you live in a country that doesn't give two shits about religion quite like America does? Oh, I wish they have more I'm exciting not holidays. <laughs> more exciting holidays. Yeah. Christmas has a has an edge to it in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. All right. So I found this article uh, two years ago on SmithsonianMagazine.com that talks about who, where Krampus came from, the, the origins of this weird ass <laughs> Christmas demon. Uh, Love it. Europe. God bless you. Go on. So here's basically the the deal. Um, historically, Krampus comes about December fifth. That's Krampus knocked. Uh, tagging along with St. Nicholas. Apparently Santa's there too. I don't know why he's out on December 5th just letting they're Krampus drinking together. Yes, yeah, it's, their, it's their pre-Christmas bender. It's the, yeah, they're, they're drinking together like, hey, you want to... I was going to say fuck some kids up, but... That's... Let's break out the nog and whip some little shit. How does that sound? <laughs> Come on, Nick, let's do this. And then at the end of the night, Santa Claus yeah. is yelling at Krampus. He's like, Krampus, stop! Don't do that! I, I love the idea of Krampus and Nicola, uh, um, Santa just being roommates 
and Mrs. <laughs> Claus is just stuck dealing with this shit between them. <laughs> I picture it like, you know, he's Santa's deadbeat brother who shows up like once a year and he's an asshole, but they're family, so we can't do anything about it. And he's just like, yeah, you can stay for a few weeks. Just don't eat the elves. He's Fred Claus. He's still- Basically, yeah, it's Fred Claus. I, I'm okay. just going to put this out there. Fred Claus is, <laughs> I'm being serious here, is legitimately one of my favorite Christmas movies. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a very long time. I remember liking it. It's been a while since I've watched it. Yeah, maybe I'll check it. I'll break it out this Christmas. <laughs> maybe. I did have myself for a nice little Christmas horror weekend for well the two shows and i also had the 4k recent i picked up the recent uh 4k release of the original black christmas oh my god did that sound and look beautiful i'm holding off i think i'm gonna watch that on christmas eve uh so this is what krampus does on december 5th traditionally he visits houses all night with saint nick remember in europe saint nick puts candy in the uh wooden shoes of good kids that's like, you know, you put your shoes out. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, birch twigs in the shoes of the bad. So if you're bad, you get some sticks. If you're good, you get some candy. If you're really bad, Krampus. Uh, I want to fuck you up. <laughs> he comes in. He beats the kids with birch branches or stuffs them into his sack, takes them to his lair to torture them and eat them. Apparently, there's a scale here. <laughs> he beats them with the with birch twigs? Yep. Santa Claus is setting him up, dude. He puts birch twigs in the shoes, and Krem is like, thanks, bro, and beats the shit out of the kids. With Basically, yeah, he's giving him the ammo. I mean, Hey, Krampus, this one, this house. Come on over here, bud. Teenage Got the sticks ready for you. Cindy gets candy. Johnny gets the stick. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit, man. I do. I I look. I as someone who like like this is keep this in mind. I am a single childless now thirty year old man. Kids can be shits. So like having a country that's like, look, we're not playing this like your special bullshit. Like if you're bad, Krampus is going to eat you. So you better be good, you little shit. How's that sound? It is hardcore. It's it's not even like he's gonna hurt you. It's like he's going to kill you, and it's gonna be scary. Like. He's sw- he's gonna swallow you whole, and that's it. What are you going to do, mom and dad? I'm going. To, we're going to make a new baby. What the fuck you think we're going to do? We're I'm gonna make popcorn and watch. <laughs> yeah, I bet the parents are like, "This is gonna be an interesting night." It's like you know that whammy game. It's like you know you either win the money or you get a whammy. In this case, whammy is Krampus killing you with a stick. I think Krampus goes to the parents first, knocks on the bedroom door, and says, like, "Hey guys, I'm uh, I'm here. Um, which which room is it?" Okay, you guys want to watch or something? Do you guys want me to go full force or like not all the way? How you know? Just I love, I love negotiations. Like Lot Krampus, who's just like you know, he's done this for a thousand years, and it's just all that. <laughs> like, so, are you gonna watch or like? Oh, doors unlocked. All right, uh, should take about ten minutes. Is that good? God, dude, <laughs> the the parents are hiding in the closet with a camcorder, like they're watching a fucking, you know, like a cuck situation. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, out of God. Instead, of, <laughs> instead of milk and cookies for him, they have like fucking beer. It's <laughs> <laughs> like the old German beer stein and like a schnitzel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro, and that that's his thing. Like he's like, wait, you guys don't have that? I'm not eating your kid. Like I'll come back, but you better have that shit ready. Like the, his one thing. You leave out beer and schnitzel for Krampus, he won't eat your kids. Yeah. <laughs> you just I love that of like him in negotiations, just like, all right, so like I'm gonna go up there, beat him a little bit. Do you want me to eat him here or whisk him away, torture me? Like, what do you want? And he's he's just like looking at the kitchen, he's like, I'm sorry, hold on. Do you have beer and the, the snitchels out for me? You don't. Oh, f- what well, you gotta do with that shit for another year? I'm out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, apparent. So Krampus is supposed to be like you know the dark side of Santa Claus. He's you know every good has an evil that kind of thing. Uh, according to uh, some Smithsonian scientists or historians, uh, it taps into kind of a subconscious macabre desire that a lot of people have that like Christmas is too sweet. It's too nice. There's got to be some darkness in there. Which is pretty fucked up. 
I love it. Keep going. <laughs> I mean, my favorite Christmas movie of all time is Christmas Carol because it gets a little creepy in there. So I don't know, maybe. Yeah, I, every, and traditionally, every, yeah, traditionally, like in the in the Christmas song, like you know, he's like you know, scary ghost stories. They used to be told on Christmas. It was it's a tradition. So yeah, Christmas has always had a dark side to it. Yeah. yeah, I I think I mean America being America probably was the one that commercialized it and make it lighter and also add a whole heaping of capitalism into it and materialism and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like I look, I know we're wrong. I do love Christmas. I do love my we've talked about it before. I love my Christmas specials. But yeah, I like that little edge and that darkness too. My favorite recent ones that came out this past month um, were Violent Night and fucking Christmas Bloody Christmas. Like. Yeah, I quite enjoyed the one that had David Harbour kicking ass as Santa Claus and also the one that had a killer Santa Claus robot fucking people up and apparently killing a kid on camera. I was not expecting that part. I want Violent Night 2 to be David Harbour versus Krampus. Like, I really want that to, to happen. Crossover? What if... No, what yeah. if it's a versus? That's like his secret weapon. Like, if, if it's something that he can't even handle, he's like, I gotta get my brother to help he's bleeding to death in afghanistan and he's like i need backup he's like open the, open the gates and they like they open some that, oh my North God. Pole prison and krampus <laughs> comes out that mrs. would be claus, terrifying are, mrs claus are you sure you know what you're about to do open the gate and it's also david harbour just like way more fucked up <laughs> um so i thought this was cool krampus's roots have nothing to do with christmas they date back to pre-germanic paganism the name originates from the german krampen which means claw which is great apparently um he's the son of the norse god of the underworld underworld hell he's literally the son of hell <laughs> this is awesome it's hot. <laughs> timely too because i'm apparently playing god of war ragnarok which shows with norse mythology so krampus could show up in god of, in the next god of war <laughs> I, a little God of War Christmas special. I want a DLC where Kratos, like Atreus, tries to teach Kratos the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh, I would actually love that. I had a, I had a quick sign out, and I guess slight spoilers for those of you who haven't played the game yet. I had such a laugh when like Atreus is trying to sneak back to like the the dwarf's house real quick after it's been realized he's been messing for like two days because he met that giant lady he's into. Mm-hmm. And I love when he's getting ready to go through the realm and Kratos just pops up like any dad and is like, where have you been for two days? <laughs> it's such, I was like, ooh, dad Kratos, coming in hot. Oh, yeah. Fucking great game. Uh, in the 12th century, the Catholic Church tried to banish Krampus celebrations because of his resemblance to the devil. They were like, this is too pag- paganistic. Can't be doing that. We own Christmas. Um. Uh, it tried to in 1934. The uh, Austria's conservative Christian Social Party tried to also destroy Krampus. Didn't work out. Krampus keeps emerging as a much feared and beloved holiday force because nobody wants their evil Christmas taken away from them. I respect. I do respect that. And if anything, this just kind of shows a lot of my beef with religion and that they are just trying to take the fun away from everything. Yeah. Haven't they seen the animated Santa Claus is coming to town? You can't destroy the Christmas spirit or the Krampus spirit, <laughs> no matter how much you want to. Christmas doesn't come from, you know, gifts and <laughs> yeah. lights. It comes from a child-eating demon forcing his way into your house. It comes from fucking rage. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas doesn't die tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, so the annual festival of child hunting Krampus takes place on the 5th. Krampus Knocked happens every year where people dress up as Krampus and chase children and leave birch twigs and shoes and run amok and get wasted and just have a grand old time in the streets of Europe. I was about to say the pictures. Hmm? I was about to like, say the pictures I've seen on this. They look like they're having a great time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What were we saying, Colton? So it's the soft core purge. Basically, yeah. Jesus <laughs> God, what the fuck? <laughs> like every kid on like <clears throat> on the on you know eleven thirty at night 
on December 4th, they start sweating. They're like, fuck, dude. <laughs> Mom and dad are up. They're getting ready, dude. No. This just gets every like parent in Europe's like rocks off. They're like, oh, God, here we go. Dad is sitting out this all year in room with a big stick, just going like slap, <laughs> slapping it into his hand, <laughs> psyching the kids out. Have you seen Have you seen a uh, series of unfortunate events with Jim Carrey? Yes. Yeah. Remember when they like they're at the reptile dude's house and they open the door and he's sitting outside. He's like, "Do you have a hall pass?" That's what happens on December fourth at eleven thirty. Think you're like, "Fuck, dude, are they out there?" They open the door and their dad's sitting there in the rocking chair with a fucking machete. Krampus mask on, ready to go. Oh. <laughs> Shit, I have some German family. I gotta ask them if they if they celebrate Krampus knocked. I gotta find out. Well, you're still alive, so no. I mean, I guess you're. I guess you're not a kid anymore, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I now I get to hunt the kids. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you survived the soft core. That's, for... <laughs> That's when I... you tell the police. I do. You know sad? Oh, if... It's Krampus knocked. Don't worry. <laughs> You know what's that? If we ever tried doing this in America, you'd, you'd have a Karen so quick. A Karen so goddamn quick. I would I would initiate Karen knocked where we just kill all of them. That'd be great. There you go. I don't think anyone would protest except for the assholes getting killed, but we don't want them. Really? <laughs> oh. Oh, so my. the big concern lately in you know recent years has been like, are the kids getting scared? Is this causing too many nightmares? So that's how they're trying to get this taken away now is, you know, complaining to officials that this is scaring kids at a time where they should be happy and cheerful and frosty and all that shit. I hate any what about the children argument because it's never actually about the children. It's about your inflated ego, you piece of shit. Yes. Yes, indeed. (laughs) So, yeah, that's Krampus. He's a Germanic pagan demon who they somehow managed to force into Christmas and he never left. You said that every good has to have an evil, but like the Easter Bunny doesn't fucking have this. Like what? What? Are like sure the, the evil, the evil tooth fairy. If you don't brush his, if you don't brush your teeth, instead of leaving a dollar under your pillow, he just fucking punches you in the face and knocks your teeth out. I mean, it but it doesn't need to be an evil tooth fairy because uh, your your teeth will go against you if you don't decide not to take care of your teeth. That's fair. Your teeth will do the job for that. Like they will take care of business later in life. They did what happens. Really darkness falls where like a kid sees the tooth fairy and the tooth fairy is like, you know, you're not supposed to see me and like kills the child or something like that. It's like the tooth fairy is a monster. It's it's not a very good movie, but yes, it exists. Um, there's also uh, it's an anthology film, but there is an Easter segment in it. So no. there, there is an Easter segment in, and I think it's called Hol- I think it's Holidays. What's the name of the movie? Is he like a rabid badger or something? That's right. like just I haven't seen it. Or dog I, or something. Oh, Donnie Dargo. There we go. Oh, Frank. There you go. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Funny. I, all right. So that was Krampus. Let's talk about the movie now. The movie I questioned hmm? the movie Krampus. The movie Krampus. Krampus with the Legend of there's, Krampus. Yes. There's a movie called Krampus Guys. I watched Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I'm not prepared. <laughs> Well, hopefully you can fake your way through it. Fake <laughs> till you make it. Um, so my question is pretty basic. Um, so Krampus has a cynical edge to it. You know, it opens with Black Friday shoppers destroying each other for, you know, discount rocking horses and shit. And the movie very much is like takes Christmas as this fam- familial obligation we all have to suffer through once a year just because. And I'm like, okay, ouch. <laughs> Not exactly Elf. But um, I was wondering, what are some other Christmas movies you guys like that have this cynical Christmas is bullshit edge to it? Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night is another big one uh, with uh, Killer Santas. Um, Christmas Evil. I recently on the Christmas special of Joe Bob watched one called Don't Open Till Christmas. This guy had this does not like Santa Clauses and is... <laughs> killing them constantly <laughs> <laughs> that's delightful um i watched for the first time in a very long time this uh past weekend uh bad santa which i hadn't seen in a very long time i forgot how fucking hilarious that movie is it's so funny and it's all about just you know everyone in that movie is an asshole he's just robbing 
department stores on Christmas Eve, just screaming at children. Like there's that scene where he's in the, like, you know, the cat, the food court, a kid walks up to him and he's just like, I'm on my fucking lunch break. Just yeah. screaming at this kid. <laughs> no, I'm not fucking Santa Claus. <laughs> the, I don't know. I don't know if you'd call it cynical, but the, the first thing that came to mind when you said that, honestly, don't laugh was how the Grinch stole Christmas. No, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I, I can see that. I don't know because that's I, cool. I, uh, I agree <laughs> with the Grinch's views, not because I hate Christmas. I'm actually like Buddy the Elf in Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. I kind of go nuts. But um, oh, so I saw a Christmas tree earlier when you moved. In the, yeah, in yeah, I got, I got it. It went up on Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving. Um, well, actually. The first day of Christmas is the day after Halloween. Uh, Thanksgiving is just a nice little break, just so you know. Anyway, not, I agree with the Grinch. The sparks, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with the Grinch. Um, I don't want to get all gross and disgusting on here, but I mean, it, it's not about the gifts. You know, you, you know, spend time with your family. I think it's weird, especially in this movie, how it's like, oh, you, you have to force yourself to be happy. But I don't think that's a very healthy mindset. I think you should just let it happen you don't need to put on a show for anyone you know yeah i agree you know I, you 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 surround yourself with people who you know make your life better you give presents to people who you you know want to give presents to you you make christmas your own and i i, I like that uh yeah. yeah like i don't you know i draw a fi- i draw a line between blood and family for sure there's a yeah. lot of people i'm related to i never fucking talk to <laughs> yeah I'm I'm very lucky. The the every time we celebrate Christmas, it's always family that I don't fucking hate. Hmm. Um, but I understand that people have that. But I feel like um, I don't know. I kind of agree with um. I for, what I for, fucking forgot the the dad's name in this movie. Adam Scott's character. Yeah. Um. He's like um. He's like, maybe the point is to like, when he says something along the lines of the point is to find common ground, which I kind of get that because, you know, it is okay. Let's put all the bullshit aside. Let's come together. It is Christmas, but don't, don't force it. If you fucking hate part of your family, it's not healthy to like surround yourself with them. So I feel like our generation is the first generation to do that, to just like cut the dead weight when needed, which I like. I I wish more people. Yeah. This movie really points that out. And it also like points out that like Caleb was saying earlier, Christmas has become so fucking based in like capitalism. It's pretty fucking disgusting. And I, I saw this article a while ago and it was like, um, do you remember how Christmas felt when you were younger? Oh. It's because people were, it's be, okay. What did it say? It said basically Christmas felt that way when you were younger because people were making it happen around you. But now you have to put out, put in the effort to make that happen. And nobody wants to fucking do it anymore because everything is more expensive. People are realizing that I don't want to surround myself with toxic people. So I think, I don't know, Christmas should be a time when you have to push all that bullshit aside and allow yourself to be happy. I don't know. I agree. I, yeah, I'm, I want my holiday, you know, experience to to be cheerful because the rest of the year is a fucking nightmare. And I want, you know, if I'm going to have to go to some, you know, relative's house I never talked to and just be berated for like political views for three days. Like, I don't want to do that. No, fuck no. Fuck that. And also, also a big part of Christmas is nostalgia, because I realized a couple of days ago that the only holiday that has music, I guess Halloween has like five songs, but Christmas music is its own category. And all the songs are old because that's christmas it's nostalgia it's bringing back when you were a kid what it felt like so i think that's cool yeah i saw i saw one that said like there's only four or five different genres of christmas music and it's like i want shit for christmas santa's horny kneel before christ (laughs) yeah it was was weird yeah yeah what are you saying caleb no i I pretty much agree with uh, y'all's point on it. I think there's a huge, and I, I look, I have nothing against like the Christmas specials or things like Christmas story that take a more like positive approach to it. Cause I think like the point of Christmas is great. The idea of like you spend it with the people you love, 
You cast the bullshit you've dealt with aside for a year, cast it to the side, and just enjoy time with those you love. Have some food, give some gifts, right? And just be thankful for another year on you know this, this earth for for ever long as you have on it. Um, but I think, like you said, you know, when you're a kid, it's easy because you had your parents doing everything in their power to make sure you had that feeling of Christmas. I definitely as have more nostalgia from Christmas in my youth than I do now. And also, because it felt like Christmas, my mom would like set up the tree the day after Thanksgiving. That's what that was our Black Friday tradition was set up the tree and get the house decorated. Um, and um, but as you get older, and like you, you know, kind of really hit with like how we treat family nowadays is the younger generation, even younger than us. I would say, I think Gen Z being a big uh trendsetter on that one, and I'm actually very fucking happy that they're doing that. Um, but when you hear the you know, you see all the time people talk about like you know. Kids shouldn't have to hug relatives if they don't want to. Like, stop forcing them to do that. Like, they don't want to hug. They don't want to hug. Um, you know, you don't need to spend Christmas or your holidays with toxic families you don't like. Like, cut them out. Like, stop, stop feeling the need to force yourself on them for like three days and just be miserable on like what should be the happiest time of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I like you said, I think as you get older and you start kind of doing more of that and realizing you don't need to do that. Like you said, with things being more expensive you kind of lose that spirit. So in a way, these more cynical films kind of reflect that. The more adult take, which is like all the shit you worry about with Christmas that you didn't worry about as a kid. You know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Now you're, you're like, shit, I don't have money to get all these fucking gifts I have to give. And like, do I really want to spend Christmas with this person or find an excuse to get the fuck out of seeing this person? Exactly. <laughs> and we're in that weird, I think right now it feels like this. It, like, it, it's not shitty. Christmas is not shitty. And I hate people who hate Christmas because you're just being a shitty person to be a shitty person. Or you're just focusing on the negative uh, aspects. Exactly. Yeah. But I I feel like right now we're in that transitional period where this new generation is realizing we don't have to put up with toxic family and all this bullshit. But in order for it to get back to that nostalgic feeling and Christmas being a happy time, we have to start like look taking a more cynical approach to cut the negativity out of the out of our lives to go back to that Mm -hmm. feeling so it has to get worse before it gets better and that is a tough thing to do to admit to yourself that like how do how do i make myself happy in that way and like what do i have to drop and that that's a difficult conversation to have with yourself uh but you know we're doing it i'm doing it all the time i've i've done it i've done it quite a bit lately i've i've cut some people out where i'm like you you you've done nothing but create tension in my life and i can't take it anymore and i've had to cut some people and you know what it stings at first but you're be- you're all the better for it down the road is this a movie podcast or is this a self help ph- philosophical this both <laughs> this is whatever it needs to be <laughs> we're here to answer all your needs call this on our toll free at no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, cynical Christmas movies are fun, but I, you know, let's yeah. let's take it back. Let's go back to the to the positive side here. I also do love the hopeful. Everything is magic Christmas movies as well. Yes, hundred percent. What I was going to say to kind of make it hopeful again, like, and then the key, you know, and you hit it on the transitional period to get it back to hope is that you know, obviously, it's good we're having it as you know, young single dudes with no 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 kids or anything, right? Sure. The, the quote unquote cynical period. So then, ideally, when let's say we if we're all lucky enough to get, you know, married and have kids, if that's our future, if not, you know, oh, well, if you're married and have kids and we can't then turn around and say, okay, I know what I want to bring forth to yeah. any children I have at Christmas yeah. and what it means to me as a holiday. And you can reignite through them in a way that, that hope and that passion for Christmas and what you like about it and bring that spirit right back into it. Yeah. I'd love to hear what Austin and Josh have to say about this because they have kids and they have to, you know, work harder to create a, a Christmassy, fun, magical environment for their kids. And I would I would love to know, like, their approach to this. I, I, I also just realized, um, especially with today's, like, political climate, I don't, I don't want to, you know, get too political heavier, but with today's political climate. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that for beyond the bad with the other. <laughs> yeah. But Christianity is, like, fucking everywhere now and it's such a toxic divide it's like fuck you if you don't believe in god fuck you if you do believe in god it's disgusting and it's creating a divide that doesn't need to be there like ebenezer scrooge says it perfectly 
as much as I disagree with him when he says this quote, but he says, you keep Christmas in your way and I'll keep it in mine. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Let people enjoy Christmas the way that they want to. If someone doesn't want it to be the day that you celebrate Christ, that's fine. If you do, that's fine. But don't fucking try to force it on other people. And that's, I think, another reason why these movies do so well because they highlight like that those that type of toxicity you know i love Mm. that you took completely the wrong lesson from a christmas carol but it actually is a good one yeah (laughs) Yeah, i mean Uh, i I will say what's interesting is that things like krampus but also obviously like santa claus coming to town if you actually pay attention yes one is much more hopeful and one is santa claus shit but they're telling the same message of look one just decides to show you the shit people deal with every year. One shows you a much more hopeful, obviously, heights and ward. But it's the same measures of like, look, you make Christmas what you want it to be. You you bring that that joy. It's kind of on you. And you just got to decide what makes you happy on Christmas. Yeah. And every Christmas movie has a really fucking good lesson, not just for Christmas, but for in life. And I also just thought of this. Christmas comes with like six days before New Year's Eve where like you have New Year's resolutions. It's almost as if Christmas is the time to be like, okay, this is my reset. This is what I need to do in my life to be happy. I'm going to follow the lessons given to us in film and apply it to my life starting now. It's like, it's like, it's like a wash. It's like a, it's like a reset. And I feel like that's why Christmas feels the way it does when, you know, Christmas Eve hits, you get the, you know, the lights, you get the music, you know, families around, good families around. You're like, okay, this is happiness. This is what I want to. I want to keep this in my life for this next year. I agree. You know, after watching Krampus this year, I've I've made a conscious decision to beat and eat way more kids than I have been in the past. <laughs> I mean, 2023 is going to be my year. Yeah, yeah. But I like I like what you're saying there. It's a it's a good point. Yeah, you'll keep that resolution until you drop it in a week, like we always do with New Year's yeah. resolutions. Oh yeah. Oh, go to the gym, get a membership. You never go. <laughs> the the lesson in Krampus is very simple. It's a it's a lesson everyone needs to, I think, take. And the lesson is don't be a dick. Yeah, that's it. That's the whole lesson of Krampus, and it's but, great. It's very simple. Don't. That's be all Krampus. That's the whole imp- impetus for Krampus even coming was that these guys were assholes and they lost their yes. spirit. So he's like, I'm going to fuck them up. And Max did children. nothing wrong. I, Krampus was not after Max. He was after the family. He wasn't gonna. I mean, until Max did the dumb bullshit at the end. But um, Krampus was helping Max. He, he maybe a little too extreme, but he was helping. I feel like the neighborhood didn't have to suffer for this. I don't think I have. I have my own theory about that. I don't think he, he was took there. out the whole neighborhood. He's like, look, all right, I get it. I get you, Max. I got Krampus is going to come in and help you out. All right, I got this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, that turned into a very insightful conversation. Uh, good, qu- good question, guys. Good question. Good job. Uh, well, I guess we're not that cynical after all. No, we got you know. It's hard, you know you got to find your way back from the cynicism. You got to take the bits of pe- of Christmas that matter to you and hold on to them. And you know that's what I've always done. I don't. I could give a. I could give a shit about the Catholic approach to Christmas. Christmas to me is a time to celebrate the people you love and just enjoy, you know, Christmas movies and Christmas cookies and all that shit. And just have fun and just enjoy yourself. Unplug yeah. and appreciate. I literally just spent money on a Christmas cookie cake. Cause I was like, fuck it. Why not? It's Christmas. Exactly. Fuck it. I, I bought myself a piece of cake today as well. I'm planning on yeah. eating it when I watch uh, American Psycho after this. You know the, uh, was it, the Great American Cookies? You know those fucking cookie cakes to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were like, hey, here's your $5 birthday coupon, $5 off. I was like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so a little background on Krampus, the movie. Uh, it was developed, written, and directed by Michael Doherty. Uh he was direct, the writer and director of Trick or Treat. We did that in October 2019. We'll probably bring it back some Halloween in the future because it's, it's a big one. 
Uh, he also directed Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and wrote X-Men 2 and Superman Returns, which is interesting. Uh, he's finally got a sequel to Trick or Treat in development. Hasn't been a lot of movement on that front, but uh, we're hopeful. Well, all right. This is this is where my cynicism comes to play. I'm not hopeful. I have been cock teased on a Trick or Treat 2 for so long that I will not get sufficiently hyped until I see a fucking trailer with a release date. <laughs> I will riot. I haven't seen the movie, but I will riot if the next movie is not called Trick or Treat, Smell My Feet. I will be so fucking mad. Trick or Treat Harder. <laughs> no! <laughs> Trick or Treat with a vengeance. Trick or Treat, the naughty guy. <laughs> ah, God, that's a whole thing. That that that's a movie. You want to talk about? Talk about a movie that should have gotten a fucking theatrical release. I mean, it did, it, it did eventually. Like, this year, oh, I was I was there. Trust me, I I was in the theater. I got my ticket to see it in theaters this past year when they finally like, let's go to a proper release. Apparently, it did really good still. And I was like, yeah, because it's a good movie that should have gotten a theater release to begin with. Um, but, regrettably, you know, Doherty just he's he makes good movies, but he can't get that dollar. Krampus was a modest hit. Godzilla King of the Monsters bombed. It's like he, he can't get that. He can't get the financial side of things done. If he could, we would have had Trick or Treat 2 a long time ago. Yeah. It's so weird because, like, so far, all three of his films, I've highly enjoyed. Sam, X Men 2 is probably the best one of the entire franchise. And he wrote that shit. Yeah. We won't talk about Superman Returns. It's fine. But, uh, I'm sorry. Godzilla King of the Monsters? How the. F- Fuck you guys for letting that bomb. Like that was ten times better than 2014's Godzilla. Obviously not a not as good as Godzilla versus Kong versus Godzilla. I mean, what was gonna what was gonna beat that? That was a big the, matchup we were waiting for. It is the perfect bridge to Godzilla fighting King Kong. A little, you know, King Ghidorah, Rodan, Mothra. That movie fucking rocked. And I will never forgive Godzilla fans for turning its back on that movie. Yeah, it, it literally said, hey, we heard you about 2014 one. You didn't get a lot of Godzilla action. So guess what you're going to get? A lot of Godzilla action. And I was happy. My God, and the cinematography, like when Ghidorah shows himself and the smoke, and I'm like, man, how is no one watching this shit? They made Ghidorah an alien. We got Godzilla's old theme back in the score. It The closing credits had the cover of Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla by the freaking system of a down guy. What more do you need? <laughs> yeah. No one. I love no it. No one. I really love that movie. That was fun. Oh, King of the Monsters is great. <sighs> Godzilla. Okay. Um, so, Doherty had always wanted to do a scary Christmas movie. The idea didn't take form until his friend sent him an e-card featuring Krampus. And he was like, oh, wait a minute. And that's how that's how it happened. Somebody sent him an e-card, Merry Krampus. And he's like, brilliant. <laughs> and that's how we got Krampus. <laughs> Ideal. <laughs> I love when it's something that simple. It's just like, oh, and from there you got a whole movie. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. So Krampus has an IMDb score of 6.2, Rotten Tomatoes score of 66%. Grossed a little over sixty-one million on a budget of fifteen million, so not a huge hit. Uh, still, you know, it's become a Christmas horror cult classic in its own right. Any movie that be, that takes place around Christmas is pretty much going to stay around forever. Mostly, there's a couple of, like Christmas horrors that don't. I don't think the mean one's going to last. Uh, Fair enough. But yeah, I mean, those are good chunk, and it, it just like. It's nice, you know what I mean? Like we we're talking, I know we were talking about the focus of the two recent editions this year. It's just nice that like horror just seems to just do a really good job when it comes to Christmas. I mean, obviously, you got your big hitters like Black Christmas, and to an actually, I would say to an extent, Silent, Silent Night, Deadly Night's a big hitter because it's just has grown in popularity over the years. But then even the other stuff people don't know about as much like Christmas Eve or Dire Code Santa or the one I watched recently that don't uh don't open till Christmas. They're all good in their own right. Obviously, quality varies, but yep. in their yep. own right, you know, they're good. Um, and like this, I mean, this year alone, like I said, and then Krampus was a newer edition, and now we got two newer ones in Violent Nine and Christmas Bloody Christmas. So it's just, I don't know, there's something about like mixing what we talked about earlier, the joyful, optimistic spirit that is Christmas 
and injecting a healthy dose of just horror cynicism just seems to be a perfect match. Yeah, totally right. And it, you know, it gives gives us plenty of fodder for our, you know, Christmas party movie marathons and shit. Like that's where the mean one's gonna be, you know. Hey, let's watch this weird ass Grinch horror movie that nobody saw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say because there's always so many good ones, there's more and more good ones, it does make it increasingly difficult to be like, okay, so what is gonna be in the rotation? <laughs> Because I'm like, I want to watch my horror ones, but I also want to watch, you know, Year Without Santa Claus or Holly Grinch or Christmas. Christmas Story is requisite viewing every year. Like, I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Um, So in 2021, Shout Factory assembled an unrated director's cut of the film titled Krampus the Naughty Cut. It's four minutes longer than the original cut of the film. And it's this version that we are focusing on for today's show. Uh and we look through the the differences aren't major. There's a couple of scenes that are slightly extended and there's a couple more swear words. But other than that, it's pretty much the same movie. So if you've only seen the original cut, you should be fine. I I definitely watched the director's cut. I did not. I swear. I promise I didn't watch the normal cut. I'm going to act like Colton is telling the truth right now and just keep on. I don't lie. Friends don't lie. How were you able to get a hold of it since it's a Shout Factory exclusive and you had like three days to order it? Well, you see, I have connections. Uh-huh. I'd love to get in contact with your guy. It's Santa. Uh, it's Santa. <laughs> yeah, I asked for it for Christmas and he was like, sure, buddy, I'll give it to you early. Because <laughs> I'm just a, such a swell guy. I believe you. God damn it. Um. I- I'll say it like this when it comes to this version. If you are a like a major cinephile, especially like when it comes to physical media, um, like I know a lot of us all here on yeah, I got my copy too behind me. I actually have it next to my Blu-ray, which I just need to put the Blu-ray elsewhere. This is the only version I'll ever watch. Where um, where's yours, Colton? Yeah, Colton, Mine? we have ours. <laughs> Mine's um in um, look what it's right next to. Whoa. <laughs> look at that. Well, that's great. <laughs> it's somewhere. I don't want to. I don't want to get up the floor's lava right now. Ah, <laughs> understandable. Understandable. Yeah. Okay. Well, as I was saying, <laughs> um, if Here you it is, are, see, it's in my hand. This is a podcast. See, it's in my hand. Ah, that's, that's amazing. For those who aren't watching this, because we don't have a, a video file. This isn't important. Don't listen to him. He's a psycho. <laughs> um. God damn it. As I was saying, um, if you are like a cinephile and like especially when it comes to physical media and you really enjoy this film and you're into like the more technical stuff, I would say go ahead and make the upgrade. Um, just for the, the transfer alone to 4K is 100% worth it. So if that's your thing and you get the 4K hookup, 100% for that alone. Also, if you're into the bonus features, they have like over an extra hour compared to what Universal's like, just let's put some stuff in there and make people happy. Um, scream no they're like no you're going to load this shit up for them to talk about this movie so if you're for the transfer and the bonus features alone definitely because yeah besides that the changes are are minimal admittedly um, but they back it up again with the the, the upgrade to 4k and then the, the insane amount of bonus features they pack into it I certainly do not have buyer's remorse I'm glad it's in my collection same yeah <laughs> Ah, where, where is your physical media collection? I told you, it told you it's over there. But the floor is lava. I, I'll go grab it later. It's over there, I like it. Uh, <laughs> so, in a shelf of movies, anytime we record, it's under there. It's under there. To be fair, Austin also does not record in front of his movie collection. We're the only idiots who do that. We we have to show the goods, <laughs> even though we don't have a video format. <laughs> It is. It does feel like we're peacocking or something with our giant ass film collection, like backing us up. It, it, it's weird. Look, at, we're we're experts. We own these. This is just where my table is. <laughs> All right. Let's discuss Black for uh, not not Black Friday. We did that a couple weeks ago. Krampus. Let's discuss that. How about that? Sure. Yeah, I guess. I mean, we can't discuss Black Friday. My first note is about Black Friday. That's why I said that. Oh, 
That is my first note too, is the opening scene of Black Friday. Yeah, the opening credits of just, you know, Christmas music and assholes trampling each I, other at a department store. I what I like about this opening is that it just sets the tone for the type of Christmas film you're getting. It's that because as the cynicism of like watching Black Friday, which is one of the worst, disgusting, vile fucking holidays we've ever come up with. I despise Black Friday. Can't see anyone's right. I hate it with a passion. Um, Good movie, though. No, the movie itself is fine. The actual holiday can go suck a fucking fat one. Um, but mixing all that, your chaos you're seeing, which, well, crazy enough, I think he said he was like, it's like not even far off from what actually happens. Like that legit happened. Like none of that was over exaggerated. No, people die. People are tramped. There's usually there's always like one person a year at least at Walmart who doesn't get off the floor. Bro, yeah. people are people are disgusting. That happens when Popeyes releases a new chicken sandwich. Okay. Like oh, if something God. is two dollars off, they're gonna fucking lose their mind. Yeah, I remember trying to like Uber eats a Popeye chicken sandwich for like weeks, and even Uber was like, We're not doing it. I was like, oh, all right. Um, no, but like mixing that cynicism, but having the Christmas music play that again, that hopeful optimism. Like I, I love how this just set, sets the tone of like, look, it's going to be cynical, but don't worry. There's going to be that little bit of hope over going hand in hand with it. When we meet the family and the cousins show up, I love the dopey ass cousin who just, doesn't oh talk ever. He's just like staring into the I, into the you know horizon. I just love that this the, this is like the aunt and uncle and the cousins that no one looks forward to seeing. We mm-hmm. all have them. We won't. I was like, let's them. be honest. We all have them. <laughs> I would not name them because I have quite a bit of cousins, and um, my my mom came from like it was like kid number nine in her in her siblings, so. Well, I have lots of aunts and uncles and cousins. So, but yeah, there's the two. There's the dope Howie, who probably going to grow up to be president. There's the two girls who dad wanted to be boys. That's why they have male names and are dressed up as, as like men, as boys. That's sad. And then there's the baby. Who they, they leave fucking the leave car. in the car? Yeah, wasn't there another child? I love I'm like, that. Oh fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. The baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I dropped off my cat at a coworker's house today. And the first thing I did when I got out of the car was take the cat out of the car. Imagine having a baby. Yeah, if you're forgetting your kid in the car, you should probably just go you away. Have, yeah. You have you have one too many. Stop, stop procreating. <laughs> yeah. Wrap it up or staple it. Just go away. Just stop. Pull out, wrap it, snip, do something. Stop! Stop letting it stay in there yeah. <laughs> to completion. Oh my god! Uh, so you know the the they have the family dinner and the aunt is such a bitch. Just I forget her name. The yeah. the one that keeps making the the comments, which I mean, I mainly some of them were kind of funny. I laugh at some of her comments. She's hilarious, but also she's just a freeloader who's just there for the the free food and doesn't contribute anything and is just constantly complaining about. Everything we all have that relative too. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I I felt for Tony Collette because like they keep getting her sure about like, oh, you can live in this fancy fan fancy fancy house. I'm like, why she she betters herself? You guys are yeah, mad because she, she betters herself. She has a pride. Oh no. Yeah, I'm like you guys suck. <laughs> You're here. You came to this house. Like, eat the gravlax. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna say, as 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 a fat ass, uh, Gravlax is fucking delicious. I'm sorry. It's isn't great. It a, isn't it a fish dish? It's salmon. Yeah, it's yeah. salmon, and it has like sugar, salt, and dill. It's fucking great. I hate fish so much. Uh, all okay. right, then, then never mind. Don't listen to what I said. God. Seafood <laughs> is delightful. Um, it really is. You, you you know Caleb when when you go to the sushi restaurant and you order the 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 sushi that's just the fish and the rice. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, the fish tastes so clean. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, dude. The the fish market over in Seattle, or the the big ass market in Seattle, they yeah. they stopped doing it because of COVID. But they used to like fling the fucking fish that you ordered at people. Nice. Like, fling it. Yeah. In Chinatown, yeah. back in New York, 
the, the, the smell of the fish market. Oh my god, dude! I I I'm, I don't. It's weird, but I love the fishy, fishy smell when I'm expecting it. If there's no fish in the area, then I I uh, you know I'm not a fan. But if there's if there's a fish, you know, I'm like okay. All right, so it's just, I, think I love that you guys could bond over something. This is great. I think all three of us should go out for seafood. I think this is a bonding moment for all three of us. Connor gets all the seafood, and we watch him eat it. Um, force feed him gravel axe. Yes, force it down his throat. Now we're uh-huh. bonding. We're bonding. Friday the thirteenth wasn't that great, and you you took all the goodwill. <laughs> All, the- <laughs> all you gotta do is mildly inconvenience Caleb one time, and years of building a friendship can just disintegrate in an instant. It's I've seen it happen so many times. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Everyone has recently been pointing out to me. Everyone in my life, as I've gotten now that I'm thirty, has been pointing out that I get like slighted by the smallest inconvenience, and I'm like. No, I don't. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you, you get angry very easily. So I, have, just... I have so many of those moments recorded. Like, yes, <laughs> you do. Caleb, does your hoodie say bald? No, it says bud. Okay. It's from Halloween, too. What the... Why would it say bald? I don't know. I, I, was, I was just trying to read it. I was like, I was like, why? <laughs> I was like, That's a weird fucking name tag. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, man. I love the idea of Caleb just walking around with a hoodie that says ball. <laughs> it just says ball. The only time I've had to identify it as bald oh. is when I was doing the paperwork to renew my license and they had a thing on there for like your hair. And the last option is bald. And I went, oh, yep, that's me. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking fantastic. Thank you for that. God damn it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, so, I've learned that apparently I get angered at the slightest of conveniences. Yeah. Might want to work on that. Me saying Friday the not, 13th I'm, isn't that great. It's not an inconvenience. It, it's a mental inconvenience. It's a, it's a slight. It's a personal slight. <laughs> Every time he, he hears someone say that, he like screeches the tire. Like, you know, the tires go, eee! and he's like, oh, shit, okay. I'm just I'm picturing the, the like the people to kill list that Steve Buscemi had in Billy Madison, and he's just adding names to it every time he hears someone say <laughs> they don't like a movie he likes. Yeah, or you know, like that time after the concert when I'm trying to get a drink and I can't understand the guy, and I'm like, I'm fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, back to the movie. Uh, the cousins embarrass Max with the the note. To Santa that's basically like I wish my family was happier which is just emotionally devastating to everybody yep. and uh, he basically is like fuck this and tears up the note and Krampus hears it and is like oh we got a live one he's like oh your family one. fucking sucks got you I'll help you out yeah I like that era. Krampus is like fishing he's just waiting for the bait he's just like come on someone give me something I'm um, very just- bored right now it's literally like his ha- Max's house is ground zero for him to tear the- take down this entire neighborhood, which is unfair. I don't think he, I don't think he takes the neighborhood down. I, f- I feel like he had nothing better to do. Like it was a slow night. So as soon as Max responded, he went, I'm destroying this whole neighborhood because I've had nothing better to do all goddamn night. <laughs> Where do you what do you think happened to all the people then? I yeah. I think that because well at the end they're in the snowball. I don't think that they're in the snowball throughout the course of the movie. I think they're in his own little pocket dimension. And like the people that are there are just like, you know, to fuck with them and give them some semblance of normal life. Okay. I can buy that. I do like the, uh, I know we'll get to it, but the ambiguous nature of this ending of like, I mean, a snow globe. Are they literally in a snow globe? Is it just now that like Krampus is always keeping an eye on them to make sure they don't fuck up again? Yeah. Uh, I do love Krampus's first appearance on the roof when Beth goes. Yes. To her oh, new friend and you just see this goat monster on the roof. If you if you take into account like Doherty's uh, career projection at this point, like he had Trick or Treat, which got horrendously just dumped onto home video when it's sure enough. All practical effects. He gets a little bit more of a budget. I'm, I'm not going to say it was probably a huge shift between Trick or Treat in this film. For this one, 
And again, you know, when everyone else have that argument, especially this year because of the MCU's use of um not always great CGI. Yeah. Um, the argument comes up with like CGI versus practical, right? Mm -hmm. This is a film that to me showcases why both are on par. There's a lot of great practical effects, but Doherty with the budget he has, especially for like another chance of doing a big studio budget film and actually getting fucking released the way it should be pulls off the CGI shots incredibly well, especially in scenes like this by putting Krampus up off in the distance, blacking the screen down a bit. So then it's like, you really, it looks so good for its budget. It looks great because he knows how to film it. He knew how to light it. He knew how to use that fucking budget. Very true. And it just gives you this sense of like, what the fuck is that? When you first see him, you're like, this is, this just changed. Cause the first half of the film is very much just a a Christmas co like family comedy, and then it turns left very hard into mm -hmm. monster horror, which is great. Yeah. The it it was the it was such a good reveal. I saw this movie in the theaters, and up until that point, I had only seen like maybe one tr one trailer for the movie, and um, I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be like a funny and like. Oh no, they're all gonna freeze and start killing each other. I mean, I know that like, Krampus was in it, but I went when yeah, I saw him on the roof, I like legitimately got chills. I was like, ah oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got he, sweaty, I got nervous. Yeah. You know? When you when you first see it, and then when she starts running away and you see that shit jumping roof to roof falling. Her. So cool. Oh, and then she gets under the under the truck or under the car, and you just the jack in the box shows up. And the way that's done is so creepy. Nope. Just you don't know what's going to pop out. You don't know where it's going to pop out. You just know Beth ain't making it out of this. Yeah. You know, like, oh, she's fucked. Yeah. That was great. Um, I love when Krampus destroys the Hummer. Yeah. Because it just sets the stage of like, oh, this thing's that strong. Like, you know, America's vehicle can't defeat no, no. Germany's demon. America. America. America's vehicle. I like how when he asked him, you think your your uh your Hummer can make it through there? And he had like the weird name for it. Uh, for it. He's like, she could make it through the, the jungles of Vietnam or something. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. He just asked you if you can drive through the snow. Yes or no. Yeah, what was that? It was like Veronica or something? Yeah, I mean, was... I can't remember. I just remember, uh, real quick, casting David Ketcher in this film. Oh my God, with Adam Scott. <sighs> Comedy gold. Comedy fucking gold right there. I loved Lucinda. That was the Hummer's name. Oh, Lucinda. I love David Keckner. He's so funny. One of my favorite moments is when uh, after um, Adam Scott saves his life and he says, I'm sorry for thinking you're a spineless dick all these years. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thanks. Uh, I like when he's like, do we have anything to eat around here? She's like, there's more of that uh, turkey or whatever. He goes, beer it is. <laughs> Plenty of leftovers. Nope. <laughs> Uh, I love that his dumbass kid gets lured into the fireplace by a cookie on a meat hook. No, dude, the, this, <laughs> movie, this movie's use of like Christmas iconography as as a villain, like not just Krampus, but he uses like the gingerbread man and like his elves are all fucked up. Um, the weird Jack in the box, like how he Doherty uses different like Christmas iconography that we know and love yeah. to just fuck these people up is so awesome. <laughs> I love when the kid takes a bite of the cookie and the gingerbread man screams. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. And then the kid gets hurled up the chimney, and that's the last we ever see of Howie. Poor Howie. Yeah. I think the I think the um, world collective IQ is better off. Um when, probably, probably knew you. When Howie Snowman shows up on the front porch, I I fucking I die every time. Cause the snowman looks just fucking like him. It's hilarious. Oh yeah, the snowmen are so creepy, just constantly getting closer to the house. They are all creepy except for that one. That one <laughs> is the dopiest looking fucking <laughs> snowman ever. It look, it's great. Um, so Omi, the grandma, realizes what's going on. She's tangled with Krampus before, and we get the story of how Krampus attacked her village. And the animation in that scene is beautiful. I love, I love an animated flashback in a non-animated movie. Yeah, I did. Oh, I did get a good chuckle when um that the aunt's like, ah, she speaks English. I knew it. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Um, 
And I also love the line. Uh, I think it's the aunt who says, I'm old enough to know when life is coming at you with his dick out. Yeah. But she like, she's like, um, Max is like, are we going to be okay? And she says something in German and like, I don't fucking know what that, what that, what that means. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Look, the aunt is a terrible, like the character you would not want in real life, but she has some one-liners that make me laugh when she's like, all right, kids, let's go in the kitchen. I'll show you how to make some peppermint schnapps. I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> they're children. Everybody in this movie is shitty, except for Max. He gives it to Howie, and he's like, all right, don't rat me out. Like, letting him drink the schnapps. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, so now everyone's kind of like, are we really th- say evil Santa? Are you fucking serious? I love David Koechner's like, what? No. <laughs> he's <laughs> completely refusing to believe this. And then the big jack-in-the-box worm shows up. <laughs> I do like when they keep trying to say it's scrolls. <laughs> They're like, just scrolls up there. Uh, like scrolls. <laughs> oh, Dude, that, that, that thing is so fucking creepy. The giant toy worm thing that eats one of the kids. Oh, yeah, dude, this is disgusting. Oh, yeah, that I want to know how they that's something I need. I didn't have a chance to get into the bonus features, but I would love to watch bonus feature on like how they conceived that fucking part and really this whole sinks i love this like the parallel of like what's happening in the attic with david kegner fighting off gingerbread men yeah shooting the cookies and then like i love the dog saves his life by eating yeah. he's just like i just got mm-hmm. fucked up by christmas cookies anything could happen now yeah i mean they're getting fucked up by some horrific looking toys in the attic holy shit we got the angel who's just fucking up tony collette for some reason just ah that was so freaky. Reminded me of the 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 one book of the dead in Army of Darkness that's like a yeah, bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do I do like when like uh she kind of fights back and she shoots the one off of Adam Scott. He kind of gets turned on in his look. He's like, Oh, honey. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, not now, guys. Let's yeah. calm down on that front. There's the teddy bear who's got like rows of teeth and it's just like ah I'm crazy. Um I love when Linda's mom strength kicks in and she just like starts you know attacking all of them and saves everybody. No, that was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. That was cool. Just to not get the jack in the box because she had to announce herself before just doing the job. The most dangerous hmm? the most dangerous toy in my opinion is obviously the the jack o lantern if it catches you but that fucking robot dude that robot was fucking him up. The robot, yeah. I love the line just screamed, you know, twisted fairy tale horseshit. Like, yeah, that's perfect. I want that on a t shirt. <laughs> David Kegner. Um, God, he is always like, he's like Rob Riggle. Like, when he pops up in something, you're like, okay, even this movie sucks, he is going to be good. Yeah. Whammy. Um, <laughs> is his face frozen? <laughs> he's having a stroke right now. <laughs> uh, Omi sacrifices herself, doesn't really. Do much with that that was kind of sad yeah, what did she think was going to happen i think she i think she's done fighting she was like it, it was going to get me eventually here it is yeah i think i think she knew um i think she knew you could tell because like based off like what she was saying the story she always had a feeling one day he was coming and that again kind of lends credence to the idol and the ending the ending that we get for this film that they are going to live their normal lives like january will come and christmas will be over but Krampus will be watching, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I kind of go with the Krampus is watching vibe because you get the feeling that she's always had that feeling growing up. Like he's always been watching her. I got the vibe that because Max like threw the bell and like said, you know, fuck you, I take it back that it's like a Christmas every day, groundhog day situation. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, you are now immortal and you're going to live every day as Christmas. Every day ends with you opening that bell and realizing what's happened, and then it just resets. That's what I thought. Oof. That's good too. Again, this ambiguous ending. I I fucking love it. What's that? What's that movie? It's not. It's not a time loop. But as um, Adam Samberg, not Adam Samberg. No, what the fuck is his name? Andy Samberg, Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, Jesse Eisenberg. Time Jesse loop? Eisenberg is in a movie, and um, they're at a house. And there's like a kid, and then he like throws up like a bird. You've named what feels like oh, tri- uh, tri- Trivium. I've never seen Trivium. What? Trivium's a band. You're talking about Vivarium? Vivarium. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know either one of those. So 
It's the one with the given seat, dude. Okay, so it's well, like so Trivium's a metal band, yeah. Florida. <laughs> Wrong one, then. But Vivarium is a movie, it has Jesse Eisenberg in it, and he, him and his wife move into this house, but all the houses are the same on the in the block. They realize they can't leave their neighborhood, and then a fucking baby appears on their doorstep, and then the baby grows up into a kid within the course of like three days, and then he turns into an adult. And he, it's just a really fucking creepy movie. I'll put it on the list. That sounds intriguing. All right. Um, so th- I had a question about the uh, the creature that's outside in the snow. That's like a like a tremors worm that keeps grabbing people. Yeah, like a graboid. <laughs> yeah, graboid. Was that like was that supposed to be the Jack in the Box creature or a different wormy creature? I I took it as a different wormy creature. Okay. That we just Ooh. don't see. Jack Frost nipping at your toes. <laughs> little, little, little nice. Toes. nice. <laughs> Tom gets eaten by that thing. It gets the moms. Eventually, it's just Max and one of his cousins. Then they find Krampus and they just throw the cousin into hell, which was like, shit. Yep. <laughs> oh, I just want to say the way that Krampus comes down the chimney, dude, is so <laughs> fucking creepy. He like just, he's like, he slides down it. He crawls through that chimney. It's fucking cracking the wall. Yeah. So, so comes out antlers first. It, yep. That to me is like up there with some of the best reveals of a monster in like any horror film. Like, yeah, when he reveals himself to Omi, like coming out of that chimney, and you're like, how now I see why he's cracking the wall. Like, this motherfucker is huge. And he's going, the fact that he went in head first, climbed through the chimney. Oh, man. So good. Well, apparently, um, according to Michael Doherty, uh, he's wearing a Santa mask. That's not his face. Huh? Krampus is wearing a Santa mask. The real Krampus, we never see what he looks like. He's wearing that Santa if, mask to hide his if, if you pay attention to, like, when you see the close-ups of his face, it's very clear that that is like a plastically a plastic that's like oh, fake that's a- face, which I always took as like something they did on purpose. I'm like, there's only the film looks this good, and that was like something they just oh, fucked no. up on. They already said to be on purpose. purpose. It's it's Krampus like almost defacing Santa Claus in his own way to just be like, you know, this is all I think of you, you hack or something. I don't know. Uh, Mate, oh, which makes me wonder, like, what does the actual face look like? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to see it. Fucking never look in the face of the devil. <laughs> I'm I'm okay with that. Let's do it. Uh, well, let's do it for this Krampus movie. <laughs> we end up in you know this ambiguous ending where they're in a snow globe and everyone comes back, but they also realize, oh shit, that all really happened. Um, I was hoping Santa would show up at the end and be like, "It's okay, Max. You know this happens. <laughs> Christmas magic will save the day." But no, Santa. Didn't show up. He died by a parent. I, I, would have had a <laughs> I would have there going off that idea where you just said that Michael already confirmed about Krampus's face. If Santa, Santa air quotes, showed up to be like, it's okay, Max. And as it's going, it slowly gets more like creepy and demonic. And it turns out it's just Krampus with the fucking demented Ooh. face of Santa talking to him. Unless, of course, that's not a plastic face. And Krampus had a stop at the North Pole before he went to handle business down here. So the the teeth <laughs> is a is, is a mask. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ew. Yeah. But that oh, that's even curious. Like, what if this was the year that he was like done with fucking um, Santa? And that explains why he went after the whole neighborhood. He's like, no, I'm not doing this one family. Fuck you, yeah. Nick. I'm taking out this whole goddamn ah. neighborhood. <laughs> Krampus knocked Santa yeah. off the roof. Krampus steals, he knocked him off the roof. <laughs> yeah, this is Krampus steals Christmas, and he ripped off Santa's face and wears it as a warning. <laughs> oh my that's, god, that's what I'm going with from now on. This is only one one cinematic version of of Krampus, mind you. Because after this film came out, we got a deluge of Krampus films. Um, there's one I'm going to watch. Part of uh, it's the second film on Joe Bob's. Uh, Christmas special. I didn't get. I fell asleep for it. You know, aired live. Um, so the first one was not open until Christmas, but the next one that I'll hopefully watch tomorrow is a Christmas horror story. Horror story. Yeah, and it has its version of Krampus in there that you've kind of. You, I'm sure you see on the cover. 
Hmm. Yeah, I heard about that one. I'd like to check that out too. Uh, so here are some film guys and facts for Krampus. Number one, Max's mom alludes to the noodle incident that estranged the family from a neighboring one. The noodle incident was often referred to but never explained in the Calvin and Hobbes cartoon strip, and Krampus also leaves it unexplained. So it's a nod to Calvin and Hobbes, the noodle incident. Oh, okay. Right. Is there any fun facts about this is Tony Collette playing in her mom in a horror film? <laughs> no, because she doesn't see Hereditary as a horror film. It's not. To her, it's a family drama that happens to be scary. Yeah. So it's a horror film. It, it, no, it did. No, I agree with her until the last five minutes of the movie. It's it's one hundred percent a horror film. What that is done. Is a that drama. Is done, it is done so fucking well because it becomes a horror movie when night falls and the cultists are in the house. That it's part a horror is film when terrifying. Charlie's head explodes in the back seat. Yeah, it's a horror film the whole way through. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go with Caleb on this one. I don't know. It I it's more uncomfortable. It's very it's you a very see, uncomfortable movie. You see what A24 has done? Because they have this now elevated horror bullshit that they're shoving down people's throats. Well, <clears throat> hold on. So I have I, I, uh this is oh, now off. see look now you've sliced it. <laughs> no, no, this is way off topic. Um I have come to hate <laughs> Midsummer. I know that you guys hate Midsummer because it's a ripoff of the Wicker Man. But oh my god, nothing pisses me off more than whenever I see people talking about Midsummer, and then in the comments, people are like, "Oh my god, Yas, Danny got away. Danny is the villain of the movie." I don't know why people don't fucking see that. Danny, they were both toxic human beings in that movie. Yeah, Danny is horrible. If you side with Danny, you are the people that the movie was based on. You fall into a cult mentality, and you are what's scary about the movie. Her boyfriend was distant, yeah, but like he had a lot to deal with. He cheated on his girlfriend because he was fucking drugged and sexually assaulted and then stuffed into a bear costume and burned alive. And people are like, yeah, she got away. No, no, she joined a cult and murdered her boyfriend. Yes. Horrible. I don't know how people can side with her at all. I gotta, I gotta revisit Midsummer. That's one I want to redo on the show because that was an early episode. I was when I saw the movie, I was in a bad mood. So I think I, I want to watch it unbiased. I, I feel like I'll come to the same conclusion, but I, I want to. I've seen it twice. I've seen the unre- like the extended director like almost three hour long cut of the film. It's okay. Like it is an okay it's film. Not, it's not great, but. Fucking hate him when people like Yas Donnie got away. No, she didn't. To quote the Grinch, "You've called down the thunder. Now get ready for the boom." Yeah, it just happened there. (laughs) Yeah, and again, it's another one of those cases of people being like, "It's not a horror film." It's like, yeah, yeah, it is. It's not. It's not one of my favorites, but it's a horror film. Summer horror's broad. I don't think Midsummer is scary. I mean, the cold, cold thing is scary, but it's not like your typical. I feel like it's scarier if you're dating someone unstable. Yeah. Yes. If, if, like, dude. Again, if I'm being honest, like that was a toxic relationship. Like, yes, was he a douchebag? He should was he a have just broken up. Should he have just broken up with her? Yes. Yeah. Not yes. take the girl you were intending awesome. to break up with to Sweden for a weird, like week among the dude. village people. Yeah. Bad ideal. Fucking invites herself. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll say, but was she kind of like to an extent emotionally manipulative as we kind of came to learn and a lot of other stuff yes like they were both horrendous human beings that were oddly perfect for each other and they didn't want to admit it wicker man's better does it better does cults better does people better it's a better movie and and it's an it's only an hour and a half long and it's only an hour and a half long. <laughs> it's a big deal for me um okay number two the gingerbread cookie that is lowered down the chimney is attached to a hook uh Meat hook or ketroker in Icelandic is one of Iceland's 13 Yule lads who carries a meat hook, which he lowers down chimneys in order to steal meats smoking on the fire for Christmas. He visits on December 23rd. There's an Icelandic meat God who visits houses on Christmas Eve and steals their, their roasts and replaces it with gravlax. My God, (laughs) Iceland. (laughs) No red meat. Eat fish instead. I love that his name is literally just Meat Hook. 
Okay. Like, you can get a little bit more creative than that. Nope, that's about as creative as you're getting out of that one. <laughs> uh, number three, in the movie, Max shares some candy from his Halloween stash to comfort his cousins. Inside his stash, you can see a lollipop identical to the one used as a weapon by the demonic child Sam from Michael Doherty's film Trick or Treat, which is pretty cool. I didn't notice that the first time. Need to see it the second time. Ah, kill a lollipop. I remember that. Yeah. Well, this was a not this was a naughty cut exclusive like scene. Not in the theatrical cut. This was from the answer into the naughty cut. So you yep. could get an Easter egg tie-in. Yeah. I think the producers I remember that scene. Yep. <laughs> you think the producers were like, that is a nod to an unsuccessful movie. Get that out of here. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I fucking hate producers. He uses a, a lollipop. No one's going to get this, Mike. Take it out. In Trick or Treat, the, the main villain is this, it's supposed to be like Samhain, the demon the demon of Halloween, in this little like sack boy costume, and he's got a sharp lollipop that he uses to like kill a couple people. Yeah. If you take away gonna... like the murder, cute kid. You gotta take away the murder. <laughs> is a Trick or Treat's a fun movie. It's an anthology series about like rant, a few weird horror Halloween shit happening on Halloween to a certain people. It all ties together at the end. It's good. <laughs> You'd like it. That's a great film. Um, I give Krampus an eight. I'm sticking with that. I think it's a wonderfully eccentric, freaky Christmas adventure. Gets better with each viewing and it's become a staple of my ho- uh, my holiday rotation. Yeah, I give it an eight also. It's a, it's a fun film. Really shows that Michael Doherty has a, it's, has a weird knack for like themed holiday themed horror films. And, you know, now that he has done his hand at like a super big movie like Godzilla King of the Monsters, I am looking forward to what he does next. Whether that be fucking Trick or Treat 2 or something else entirely, I'm betting on something else entirely. You um, know, considering his record with the X-Men, I would love if he's the guy who helms the X-Men for the MCU. That would be great. Fucking dope. Look, I'm just, if you can't tell, I'm betting nothing on Trick or Treat 2 because I will not get excited for what I really want until I see it happen. Um, I, I understand. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it's just a solid film that you know, great cast, great set pieces, perfect balance of that cynical, like horror, like I talked about earlier, the horror cynicism meets the positive Christmas spirit. That, yeah, I this has become a, a an easy rotation watch for me, so eight out of ten for me. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon, I'm gonna give it an eight, too. Just it falls right in. You know, it fits nicely in your rotation of Christmas movies. It's got a good lesson, which I think all Christmas movies should have. Um, You're talking about the naughty cut, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, So don't watch that. You own, own, right? The naughty cut? Yeah, I own it. It's over there on the other side of the room. Um, Yeah. uh, Yeah. Eight. Fantastic. It's it creeps me out still. Um, I'm a bitch for aesthetic horror villains and Krampus is so menacing. Um, but what I really do want is I want a sequel where uh, Krampus visits um, the Home Alone kid <laughs> because uh, Krampus is not getting in that house. It's his house. He has to defend it. Oh my God, that would be incredible. I would love Just that. An increasingly more flustered Krampus. Like, what the fuck? This is usually really fuck? easy. He takes a paint can in his is... face. He stumbles outside. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> this isn't right. Oh, the mask falls off and it's just Marv. It's Marv. <laughs> Even like the gingerbread men come running out. They're like, Krampus, what the fuck? We, we're not used to this. He's fighting back. I can I see want... one of the ginger men soggy, soaked in milk. He's like, please help. <laughs> I can see the teaser trailer right now. It's, you know, a uh, a, a snowy Chicago suburb. Krampus is on a on a roof. He climbs off the roof. He walks up to this house, and you just the camera pans over to the mailbox, and it just says McAllister, and everyone's like, "Ah, wow!" Fuck. Best part is instead uh-huh. of getting a new like kid to be Macaulay Culkin's character, it's Macaulay Culkin in his fucking late thirties, dude. Yes, and he's like, he's like, Christmas fucking sucks, dude. You know what it is? It's thirty years later. Every single year, his family forgets about him. So at this point, he's fucking done. He's like, fuck Christmas, I'm done. So he does something. Krampus is like, I'm going to fuck this kid up. And then he's like, no, you know what? Fuck you. And then, you know, man, there you go. 
I would have it be 30 year old Macaulay Culkin playing 11 year old Kevin McAllister. <laughs> Just never address it. He's still, he's still a child. And they're all like, well, we're going to go, we're doing Florida again. Don't be late. And he's like, I'm not going, I'm not tired of this shit. You know what? He probably would do. He, he has and kind of proven to like have zero issues embracing the whole home alone fame. Yeah. Even now he is all in on. He's like, yeah, that's what I'm famous for. I'm cool with it. <laughs> I mean, he grows up to be jigsaw. So I mean, you know, whatever. I love that theory. <laughs> ah, this was fun. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, if you like the show, feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Filmgasm Productions. If you want to suggest films for us to check out, you can email us at filmgasm at gmail.com or send us a message through the socials. Check out our website, filmgasm.com, where we have articles, reviews, trailers of upcoming films, and every episode of our shows. If you want to support the show through Anchor, you can click on support this podcast on your preferred provider. We appreciate it. Uh, next week is the last filmgasm of the year. This year flew the fuck by. Uh, what better way to ring in 2023 than with the 1980 holiday slasher film New Year's Evil? A DJ receives a call from a mysterious killer who says that every time New Year's strikes in each time zone, someone's going to die, ending with the DJ herself. The film is currently streaming on Prime Video and Paramount+. Plus. I haven't seen this one yet, but it felt like the perfect send-off for 2022. Thanks for sticking with us this long. Uh, so I know nothing about New Year's Evil beyond the log line on IMDb. Uh, Caleb, you said it was it was good. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. It's uh, uh, Josh showed it to me last year. It's my first time watching it, and it's it's fun. It's definitely like it is definitely an '80s slasher, you know, holiday themed movie. I won't deny that. With the requisite amount of sleaze and everything, I've I've come to enjoy about the subgenre. Um, but it you know it takes advantage of its hook. It's entertaining enough. The kills are pretty like good and creative and gory. So I I had a fun time with it. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, but but you also like Friday the Thirteenth, so yeah. you know we were bonding so good earlier. And you're just shitting on that bond. <laughs> yeah, I, I sorry to, to interrupt your closing statements. I just want to say I joined the podcast this year, um, and my year has been made better for it. So I'm really happy to be part of the team. Thank you very much. I want to say now because it won't be on the next episode, but. Yeah, truly, you guys are like my family now. You guys are opening my eyes to. I thought I was a, a movie guy before this, but and, and now I'm, you know, I truly am a movie guy. So thank you, very much for having me be a part of this. You're very welcome, man. I appreciate that. You're you're a welcome addition. You brought some some new blood to this show. We've had some killer episodes together, and I'm I'm glad you 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 came on board. Yeah, of course, and I'm, I'm, I'll be here as long as you want me. Um, but uh, if I write the fucking bio. Yeah, we still need that. So yeah, that's that could be my Christmas present. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> no, yeah, it it's it's been great. I I I need you to like Fire 13th though. I need to get on that, right? You need to get on the stand wagon. Um, it's a good movie, it's just not great. Not even good. Hey, you <laughs> shut up over there. It's a good movie. Um don't don't you, you shut your face. <laughs> Good goddamn movie. <laughs> okay. yeah, no, it's, both oh my a lot of nice fresh blood to this, and I get breaks because of it. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, don't miss the 2019 remake of Black Christmas on Fridays Beyond the Bad and the Christmas classic It's a Wonderful Life on Oscar Sunday. Until then. Put up with your shitty family if you have to. Just don't accidentally summon Krampus to handle them. Otherwise, the neighborhood's going to pay for it. Have a lovely holiday. Keep watching movies. Mm-hmm.